is the century of the developing countries. Uh, they're going to be growing really fast, populations growing, incomes growing faster. They aspire to the same living standards as the developed countries. That means huge demands for lighting, air conditioning, transport, you name it. And that means huge demands for energy and for land. And these demands can't be satisfied unless, uh, unless they and the developed world, too, adopts green technologies that, that make this, this growth sustainable. Well, technology transfer is kind of a buzzword, and it's often uh, narrowly associated with the transfer of intellectual property rights from the north to the south. But really, it, it's much more than that, and, uh, and patent rights, while Im often important, are, are not the be-all and, and end-all. So let me give you an example. In China in the 1990s, uh, they identified as a big problem the profusion of, of really inefficient coal-fired uh, boilers in the industry. These are a huge source of local air pollution, very inefficient users of, of fuel, uh, and, and we're also contributing to global warming. So the World Bank, together with the Global Environmental Facility, uh, set up a project that would uh, buy and transfer technology licenses for improved, efficient boilers to eight Chinese manufacturers. And the thought was that, that this technology would then spread rapidly within China, that within five years they would achieve a 35% uh, market penetration ratio. Well, what happened, in fact, is they only got a 3% uh, uh, market penetration. Why is that? A couple of reasons. Uh, first of all, only two of the eight companies really uh, were, were enthusiastic about adapting the technology to local conditions and, and, um, and marketing it vigorously. And second, none of the companies uh, wanted to transfer the technologies to their, their competitors. So in contrast, though, uh, we think there's a, a very important role for technologies which are inherently not patentable. Uh, these, these are actually particularly interesting because it's, it's precisely these kinds of technologies that we'd expect to, to spread most rapidly. So let me give you another Chinese example, uh, another World Bank uh, Global Environmental Facility project introduced the concept of energy service companies. And you can think of this as, as an institutional innovation, an institutional technology that bundles in one company uh, engineering services and lending services to make it easier for, for companies to, to introduce uh, energy efficiency um, innovations. So three pilot companies were set up, and they were set up in such a way that they, they demonstrated how they worked. Uh, consequently, there are now hundreds of these, these companies. The idea has, has spread rapidly, and they're making a really important uh, contribution to energy efficiency in, in Chinese industry. Well, I want to return to this idea of demonstration projects, because they, they can have a powerful impact on, on in many different ways. They can demonstrate the, the technical and, and financial viability of, of, uh, of technologies, and thus make it, it easier for investors in the countries to pick them up and, and transfer them. They can also uh, help adapt the, the uh, technologies to local conditions. So one really interesting example is a, uh, is a bank project, another bank GEF project, in Latin America called the Silva Pastoral Project. This project was designed uh, really as an experiment that was try trying to determine the conditions under which ranchers would adopt practices that would be not only good for the environment, good for biodiversity, good for storing carbon, uh, but also uh, good for producing uh, cattle. And what they found, uh, I think to, to the surprise of some of the ranchers, was that, that taking a, a pasture and planting it with 20% uh, trees was actually more profitable for them than, um, than a treeless pasture because the, basically the, the cows could, could uh, munch on the trees during the, the dry season and also they had better weight gain under the, the, under the shade of the trees. So with this very convincing demonstration, the Colombian government was, was motivated to, to borrow more money at, uh, at market rates and, and really expand this, this program uh, throughout the country. Well, we point to, to two kinds of practices which might, uh, might help really accelerate technology diffusion at the global level. The first is the importance of rapid feedback, so people rapidly learn what's working and what's not working, so we can scale up what's, what's working and fix what's not. Uh, one important example of this comes from the Clean Development Mechanism. That's the, the institutional framework for carbon projects. And an important feature of this is that it requires people who are, who are on the carbon market to report annually and publicly on what their production has been. Now, this turned out to be important in the case of landfill gas projects. These are the projects that collect methane that comes off uh, landfills and use it to generate electricity. 
there was a spate of these projects that went into production around uh, the year 2000. By about 2003, it became clear that these were grossly underproducing what was expected. And because this was publicly known, uh, people gathered together, they tried to, to diagnose what was going wrong, and they came up with one of the answers. Interestingly enough was that uh, they had been designed on the basis of, of U.S. garbage. Hmm. U.S. garbage has a different moisture content than garbage in the developing world, and it, it decomposes at a, dis at a different rate. So armed with this information and with, with other, other things that were learned, uh, the, the newer generation of projects that, that have gone in have, have performed better. So another, uh, another lesson is the importance of grant financing to get these demonstration projects going. Even though many of these, these projects really offer high returns to host countries, uh, countries are, are risk averse. They want to invest for the first time in something which might not work. And so the ability to, to provide grant financing for that, that first demonstration uh, really points the way to, a, to what you might call a public uh, venture capital approach, where you, you show that something works, and then the private sector is, becomes confident to jump in and, and uh, scale it up more widely.